Today, a non-gaming pickups video. So, we'll start off first with a book. I've been after this for quite a while. Uh, it's been on my Amazon wish list for ages and uh, I was buying something, a uh, birthday present for someone, I think it was my mum, and of course it, it was just a couple of pound under the £20 you need to get free delivery. So I'd look for some cheap items to add on just to get it up to 20 quid to get free delivery. So it would have worked out over 20 quid with delivery. And ended up noticing that this book was on sale. Hardback and it was only about £5 I think so that was good. And that is Slobberknocker, My Life in Wrestling by Jim Ross. Uh, obviously hugely famous uh, commentator for WWE. He was in WCW before that, um, the NWA, obviously, Jim Crockett Promotions. Uh, was he there when, was he there before Turner bought it? I don't think so. Uh, he might have been. And, uh, of course, he worked for Bill Watts, who was also a referee to begin with. He always done talent relations in WWE, he's done tons of other jobs. Um, yeah, he spent most of his life in the business and was you know, a huge part of bringing in talent, signing talent and just being behind the scenes in general so I'm very excited to read about all the uh, crazy stories and things that he was involved in. Next, uh, it was my birthday last month and uh, my friend picked this up for me because he actually works at the, uh, the publishers that are behind this one. He told me about it, I asked him to pick it me up and he ended up giving it to me for my birthday instead. And that is the NES Encyclopedia, every game released for the Nintendo Entertainment System by Chris Scullion. Hope I'm pronouncing the name right. If not, tough shit, isn't it? Yeah, so there it is, nice hardback. Um, so, I don't know if it, uh, people who watch my show know of a, a guy called Pat the NES Punk uh, from America. Uh, he did, you know, um, reviews on NES games, uh, did a couple of collaborations with the Angry Video Game Nerd, that's when I first saw him. Um, he, do, he doesn't really do much of those videos anymore, he has a podcast that he does. And um, What he spent uh, quite a, a couple of years on was a, uh, a huge book about the NES, cataloguing every game for it. But the difference was he reviewed them all, well not just him, we had a group of people because obviously that would have been a huge task for one person. Um, and I always wanted that book, you know, it's big, thick, you know, it's like this big, hardback, massive book. It costs about £60 um, when you convert it to, um, you know, pounds from dollars. And then delivery costs about £60 from America because it's that big and heavy. So it's just never been something I've been able to get. So when I heard about this, I was very excited. Um, I looked it up, a guy with a preview of it on his website, a couple of pages shown, and I thought, yeah, that's great. It doesn't review the games, but it does tell you about all of the official releases and a bunch of unlicensed ones. And the only thing it doesn't do, it's not uh, all the Japanese releases like for the Famicom. He'll mention them if they were obviously released over here or in America, but that's it because do the Famicom games and you've got another book entirely. Yeah, so uh, what the book mainly consists of is obviously all the games from A to Z and each page is filled with four games in little quarters. A uh, screenshot of the game, then some information about it, what the game's about, a couple of uh, interesting things about it and then a fun fact uh, for every single game. Um, yeah, so let's see what cool fact we've got here. Da, da, da. Do, do, do. Let's see if there's anything genuinely interesting. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm just looking for something a bit, you know, that it's not particularly obvious. Ah, here's one. Defenders of Dynatron City, uh, which was a game that didn't come out here in Europe, but it was in America. And the fact is, the animated TV pilot aired in February 1992 included, and included voice acting by Whoopi Goldberg and Tim Curry. Christopher Walken also provided a voice, but was replaced. Yeah, so there was a game that came out in America, a TV pilot was made, and had some huge names behind it. 
So yeah, and then obviously some games are you know bigger than others, and they'll get you know two sections or some, uh, like here with uh, golf, gets a full page about it because you know it's a huge game, it's historic for one way, one way or another, for one reason or another. Can't bloody talk. Yeah, so this was great. I enjoyed thoroughly. I read this cover to cover. Although the only bad thing is, I, when I was reading it, I just had a notepad and pen next to me. And any time I saw a game that I was interested in, I wrote it down. And my Nintendo Entertainment System want list went from around 20 games to almost 90. Yeah, so there's now almost 90 NES games I want. <laughs> Uh, a handful of them uh, never came out over here, so I'd have to get hold of the NTSC cards, but that's fine, I can play those. But yeah, there's so many games in here, I just had no idea existed. And then of course you've got the unlicensed games that were also released, which is really cool, and facts about all of them. So yeah, very happy to pick this up, it's an excellent book, and I absolutely highly recommend it. Okay, moving away from books now, we have some Blu-rays! I uh, got some of these for our birthday money, and the first one is Lethal Weapon, the complete first series. Yes, the TV series. I am a huge, huge fan of the uh, the original four films. There's rumours of another one coming out, so when the series was announced, I was yeah, a bit, eh, I don't know. But then I noticed the guy that played Riggs was someone that I remembered from the TV show Leverage. It was only in a handful of episodes, but I thought, hey, he seems cool. I'll give it a try and you know what it's excellent it really genuinely is excellent unfortunately it only lasted two seasons and uh, there was a you know the the, the co-stars did not get along with each other uh, there was a bunch of shit going behind it and they eventually fired the actor who played Riggs and uh, they continued with season three with uh, Sean Scott, Sean William Scott, Sean Sean Scott Williamson, what's his name? The guy that plays Stifler <laughs> in American Pie. Can't remember his bloody his proper name. Uh, Mister Willie's just uh, wandering about over there. Clearly interested in what I've got to say. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so they they continue with the third season with uh, Riggs no longer in it. Yeah, Lethal Weapon show without Riggs. Great job. And um, the guy that plays. Um, Audit Myrtle has also left the show now after season three, so you know they'll probably continue it with two completely new characters, make a lethal weapon show without Riggs and Myrtle because that's what people do. But yeah, the first two seasons of this are fantastic. After that, I, I never I, I watched the first episode of the new season. I didn't like it. My dad and brother watch it. They they thought it was good, but yeah. So first season, very good stuff. Uh, next is Person of Interest, Season 2 on Blu-ray. Person of Interest might very well be my favourite show ever. I absolutely loved it when it came out. Just excellent stuff. You've got Michael Emerson, um, best known I guess as playing... Um, Ben Linus in Lost, could not think of his name to save my life there, um, it was fantastic in that, so when I heard he was going to be in this, absolutely watched it, uh, you've also got Jim Caviezel, who I think was sort of mainly known at the time for being in The Passion of the Christ, he played Jesus, never saw it myself, but yeah, a uh, bunch of other people in it as well, and it is a fantastic show, uh, basically, uh, Michael Emerson's character builds a machine after 9-11 uh, to spy on the world, essentially, and you know try and prevent terrorist attacks before they happen. But the premise of the show is that it doesn't just detect acts of terrorism, it sees acts of everyday violence and things like that involving ordinary people. So him, along with uh, Jim Caviezel's character, he joins up with him, a former CIA agent, um, and they basically work sort of in the shadows, undercover, to help normal people. Every episode sees them getting a new number, um, which is just a social security number, which tells them who they need to look for, and these could either be the victim or the perpetrator. You would never know at the start of the episode, and then, you know, lots of chaos ensues, 
and there are some incredible overarching stories over each season and um, yeah it really just fantastic all the way through so I also picked up season three season four and season five to round off all the, uh, the, the show so I now own all five seasons on blu-ray yeah, um, I was a bit disappointed it only had five seasons but at the same time it did get five seasons which is great and it did end very well and it didn't go downhill in, it didn't go down in quality so that was awesome there really is nothing worse than a TV show you love going on for far too long and just ending really badly which ironically Lost did so yeah Okay, moving on, another Blu-ray is uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. In my opinion, the best uh, Star Wars film to come since uh, Disney bought the franchise. I uh, love the original trilogy. I like Revenge of the Sith, although I think it does drag on a little bit. Um, I don't really care for The Force Awakens, don't really care for The Last Jedi. Solo... I was pleasantly surprised with, I enjoyed it, but uh, I think this is actually a great film. So definitely up there with the original trilogy for me, so nice to want it on DVD, uh, sorry, Blu-ray. And it even comes with a bonus disc, which I didn't know when I bought it. I always like um, special features and things like that. So yeah, there's one for my uh, Star Wars collection. And next... We have an old Schwarzenegger film from the 80s. Did it come out in the 80s or was it early 90s? Well, 1993. Uh, Last Action Hero. Just an absolute fantastic action comedy film. Basically, this kid gets a magical cinema ticket and uh, uses it to go into the movie world. Um, it happens to be the movie of... Uh, wow... There is literally no information on the back about the film, none of who the characters are or anything. It just says that it's action adventure superstar Arnold Schwarzenegger bursts through the screen as a larger than life movie hero in this non stop adventure from acclaimed director John McTiernan from Predator and Die Hard. Yeah, thanks for that. Basically, Schwarzenegger is a, in a film, you know, he's a movie star, and this kid goes into the movie world and meets up with the character that Schwarzenegger plays within that world and there's a lot of you know uh, movie tropes and things, action tropes and things you, you, you've you got the uh, the angry black um, police captain who just you know, just yells and screams and goes on tangents and things like that um, you know you've got injuries that normally will kill people and they just walk away perfectly fine because you know it's a film and then, of course, they end up coming into the real world along with the villains from the film. One of whom is played by Charles Dance, who uh, people probably know these days as Tywin Lannister in Game of Thrones. Oh, he's fantastic as a villain in this. And it's just a really, really fun film. Probably a bit underappreciated when it comes to uh, Schwarzenegger's you know, classic action films. But yeah, it's definitely up there for me. Really like it. And uh, the film got me into ACDC. Uh, one of the film's uh, soundtracks is um, from ACDC, a song called Big Gun, that they wrote for the uh, the film. And the DVD version that I originally had, had um, the music video for Big Gun as a special feature. So back in the day, I watched the DVD, watched the extras, liked the song, got into ACDC and ended up buying virtually all of their albums. So all thanks to this fantastic film. Right, next up we have a birthday present uh, from my friends Tom and Jess. They got me the Deadpool 2 Blu-ray and it's also the Supercut which has uh, like 15 minutes of extra footage. Which, yeah, I uh, very much enjoyed the film to begin with. 15 extra minutes, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a fantastic film. Um, first one is a little bit better in my opinion, but this one's still great. You've got... Uh, Obviously, Cable coming back. Um, is it Cable? Do, 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 do. I think it's Cable. Is it Cable or the other guy? I always, there's always two guys I get really confused with. Uh, uh, well, that isn't helping. I think it's Cable, isn't it? The guy that travels back. Anyway, he's played by um, 
the guy that played Thanos in uh, the proper MCU, which Deadpool can now technically be a part of, so that'd be interesting to see if uh, he shows up in something like that. But yeah, really, really cool film, really funny. Um, you know, Ryan Reynolds just plays Deadpool perfectly, way better than they had him in uh, Wolverine Origins, because that was a complete and utter disaster. And lastly, a film that I uh, just bought for myself, it was nice and cheap, uh, We Still Steal the Old Way. Uh, this is a sequel to We Still Kill the Old Way, which I saw on a Blu-ray. And it's basically a uh, British gangster film, um, rather recent, only a few years ago. Uh, basically, a bunch of older guys who used to be in a firm um, get back together. Um, the first one, obviously, they get back together to avenge the, uh, the head of the firm's uh, brother who was killed by these young kids who were just complete assholes. So they go after them and then decide to stay together. This one, uh, they pull off a heist, but most of the film is set in prison. Uh, so it's also made like a prison film mainly. The heist is sort of in the background, but then we understand later on why it is an important part of the film. Um, it isn't the best British gangster film out there. Uh, it's a step below the uh, the first film as well, but I still enjoyed it, and it only cost like a quid on Blu-ray. Uh, the other one, uh, we still uh, kill the old way, is usually in pound shops for a quid. <laughs> so yeah, um, if you enjoy these kind of films, yeah, pretty cool, and there'll be people that you recognise in them as well from lots of other gangster films. So there we go. Okay, so those are all my recent non-gaming pickups. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what recent non-gaming pickups you got. I've been Cal, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.